All right, who remembers Blind Date? It was an American dating show that was hosted by Roger Lodge. Hey, everybody. I'm Roger Lodge, and welcome again to Blind Date. And let me tell you, TV dating doesn't get any better than this. And I hear the host is a bit of terrific. During each episode, they would set up couples that have never met each other on blind dates and they would get a film crew and just follow them around on their dates. The show ran from 1999 to 2006 and at one point it seemed like anytime you turned the TV on at night, blind date would be on. The show was actually pretty funny. During the show, they would get thought bubbles up, they would get pop-ups, they would make fun of the people, they'd get animations. The graphics was actually really cool for that time. The wiggy, wiggy, wiggy. There you go. I'm doing it. I'm rapping. <laughs> Instead of me just trying to explain everything as a viewer, I thought I'd get somebody on to help me out that was actually on the show. Carlos was on blind date when it came to Toronto. I couldn't find the whole episode, but here's a clip that I found with him on the show. Well, I meet a lot of women regardless of wherever I am. Well, I've never really had a one night stand because I usually please them so much that they usually want to come back for more. So I figure what dating really is, is a big addition for the big show, which is usually marriage. So that's the whole point of dating, is meeting all these people, picking what you want from them, and eventually if you like them, you marry them. That's what the whole point is, so. I'm open to a relationship always. Well, that's just the attitude we're looking for. So let's go explore Toronto with Lisa Ann and Carl and see if a relationship is in the cards. All right, so I saw in the newspaper, uh, they were auditioning for Blind Date, and that was actually my mother's favorite show. She loves that show. So I was like, you know what? Let me go down, down there. So I go down the speaker's corner, and there's a massive, massive line. So you know how Toronto is already, right? Huge line. I said, I'm not waiting in this. I said, forget us. I'm going home. So some guy in line said, hey, man, just jump in with me. I'm like, all right, man. So I jump in line. I go into speaker's corner and they're like, tell us why you think you'd be a hot date. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. I'm six or three. I'm black. I eat and I don't drink. And, and, and then I get a call a week later and they're like, hey, come back to the second interview. I'm like, oh, you're kidding. Wait, wait, hold on. Slow down, slow down. So you literally said you're six for three. You're yeah. black. You eat yeah. and you don't drink. And I don't drink. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all I said. Because everybody was like, oh, I'm fun, I'm spontaneous, all that kind of stuff. Like, it doesn't come up very authentic. Yes, everybody said fun and spontaneous. I'm a lot of fun. I think if I was on Blind Day, it'd be a lot of fun. It's fun. I'm a lot of fun. I am tons of fun. I am fun with a capital F. I just exude fun. I would be fun, funny. I can make it anything. I just think I'm fun, spontaneous, outgoing person. I'm fun and I'm spontaneous. I'm spontaneous and fun. That's about it. I'm a very spontaneous person. I like to have a lot of fun. I'm a pretty outgoing, uh, fun, spontaneous guy. I'm fun, energetic, crazy, and hey, you never know. I'm fun and I'm spontaneous. Like, come on. <laughs> like, 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 how do you, like, how do you moat that? Like, hey, I'm fun and spontaneous. So now you look like you're just acting, right? So exactly. they call me back for the second interview, and we're in a room, and there's like, like, probably like 30 of us, right? So they chose. About 5,000 people, they narrowed down to 500. So there are 30 guys in the room. And they're like, okay, we're gonna ask you some questions. Tell us a funny story about your dating history. Now, all of us have to be dead silent, right? While they're telling, everybody's telling their stories. So we're listening to these guys' stories. This one guy's story is telling us about how he went on a date with some girl and things are going well, he's messing around with her and he felt someone licking his feet. And he's like, okay, cool, he's gonna get a threesome. And then all of a sudden the girl starts going down on his, turns out, it was the girl's dog. Now the whole entire room is trying not to die laughing at this point. Cause everybody's like, <sighs> but the whole room wants to laugh. Listening to this guy's story. I'm thinking, okay, this guy's made it on the show because this story you can't beat. So then I go on there and I'm telling them my, 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 my shtick, whatever the case is. And then I get a call two weeks later. They're like, hey, listen, would you like to be on blind date? And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. So I'm like, yeah, hundred percent, sure. What was your story? Like, what did you say? I was like, hey, you know what? Toronto is a big city, but it's a small city. I'm one looking for someone, you know, if I find someone cool. But my whole thing, my whole story was, I'm looking for someone with That's all I kept on saying. That's all I wanted someone with I said, I don't care what she looks like, I need someone with That's it. And I kept on saying that over and over and over and over again. I'm thinking, okay, if I get picked, you're going to send me someone with They call me, they say, okay, you're picked for the show. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. So I called my mom and said, mom, I'm going to be a blind date. So it's like, love it. So you're on a date with maybe like 15 people. It's a whole production. Like you got the mic guy that pretty much follows you the entire day, two camera guys, a production team. So you're not on a date by yourself. You're with a whole slew of people. So they're like, okay, you're going to walk towards our house. So I'm walking towards this girl's house and I don't know which one it is. And 
production before like, oh, no, no. so I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm like, okay, they're like, do it again. So when you're on these dates, it's kind of like a lot of repetitive stuff. You don't just like, um, like if we're walking, if one is walking to her house, um, they're like, okay, walk towards our house again. I'm like, okay, fine. They're like, okay, walk towards our house again. So you kind of do it like three times, right? I get to her house and very, very nice girl. Lisa Ann was her name. Super, super nice girl. Um, and they're like, okay, we're gonna take you on a date. So we're like, okay, cool. So where are we going? And so these guys are from the state, so they don't know Toronto and Toronto traffic. And so they're like, okay, we're gonna go to, I think, North 44. And they were driving in the wrong direction. So as me and her are talking in the car, we're kind of like, I'm looking out the window, I'm kind of like, these guys are going the wrong way. And I'm like, hey guys, you guys are going the wrong way. <laughs> Wait, hold on, one quick question. Yeah. Did she have to my level? No. Was it a Kardashian? No. You know, she was in great shape. You know, great girl. I have nothing negative to say about her. Someone you probably marry, like super, super nice girl. So then we're going the wrong direction. So they said, okay, fine. We're not going to make it to North 44. We're going to take you to the CN Tower. So I was like, nice. So we go to the CN Tower for dinner and, you know, the revolving restaurant. And so, of course, I'm on television. I'm like, hey, let's play some games. I'm like, let's have a little bit of fun. And um, I'm going to, we'll play a little bet game. And then we just pretend to give me your underwear. And she's like, no, I can't do that. My national TV, my parents are watching this show. I'm like, it's okay. Don't really give me an underwear. Just give me your napkin. Don't pretend you're it's underwear. All of a sudden, some guy's like, hey, just give me your underwear. Now, you don't realize that you're mic'd the entire day. So the sound guy listens to everything that you say. When you go to the washroom, if you make a phone call, but you forget this because the date's like 12 hours, right? So she didn't give me the underwear, of course. So we go to the CN Tower and then you're like, okay, we're going to take you to the Air Canada Center. Now, apparently the Air Canada Center, you can brew beer there. I didn't know this. Like, yeah, it's a brewery. Yeah, it's a brewery for beer. I didn't know this. Wow. Right, so they take us to the Air Canada Center and she sings Oh Canada on the speakers with the Raptors practice. And then she was a very good, good singer. And then they took us to eat oysters and drink beer. Two things I don't do, seafood and beer. <laughs> wow. They didn't even ask you what you like. They just kind of made plans. They, like, just All right. send you, they do everything. You know nothing. Wow. But so, you said you don't drink. You literally said it in your audition process. Yes. And I get sent to a place where they brew beer and seafood. So now they're like, here, drink these, eat these oysters. Now I've never eaten an oyster before. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna simulate eating an oyster to what it's like for girls to swallow. Now, I don't know if you've ever swallowed an oyster, but it's a long gooey thing that goes at your throat. It is the worst experience I've had in my life. So now I suck back this oyster and it gets stuck in my throat. So now I'm choking at national television. Then I get this <laughs> beer thinking I'm gonna chug this thing down. So now the beer gets stuck in my throat with this oyster. I'm now almost dying on television. And they're like, just swallow it. I'm like, so I can't swallow this. So I eventually swallow this written oyster with beer. Horrible. Everybody in the production team thinks it's hilarious, right? And here I am, I'm like, this is bad. This <laughs> that's is good so bad. TV though. That's really good. I, great wish, TV. I, wish, I wish I could have seen that. That's that's hilarious. It was, it was entertaining. And remember, everywhere that we went, we were walking down Queen Street, we were walking down CN Tower, everybody was stopping and asking us for autographs because we literally looked like a celebrity because we were like a team of people, lights, and it was, it's pretty It's pretty um, surreal. Then they're like, hey, we're gonna go down to Electric Circus. <laughs> wow. So I'm like, all right, cool. So we go down to Electric Circus and they're like, hey, blind dates in town, hey, so we go on Electric Circus. And they're like, hey, what's it like to date Carlos? And she's like, oh, blah, blah, he's a nice guy. And they're like, cool. Guess what, Carlos, we have a surprise for you. Your ex-girlfriend is here on the show. My ex what? The, yeah, what? my ex-girlfriend's a dancer on the show. And I'm like, this is great. So they pull her up, they're like, hey, so he's on a date, you're on a date with him. What's it like to date Carlos? And she's like, well, he's a player. I'm like, this is going very, very well. Wow. So the production team <laughs> is loving this at this point. They're like, we love this. This is awesome. So we are at the Lecture Circus for a little bit. And then they're like, okay, we're going to give the illusion like you're getting dropped off at home. It was just a hotel. And they're like, you can go into a hot tub if you want, or you can just go home. Now, my mother watches this show. I'm like, I'm not getting naked on national TV because my mom's watching this. So I'm like, I'm not going to go to the hot tub. I'll be the nice guy. And I'm like, I'll just give her a little kiss goodbye and then went home. And then that was it after a 12 hour day. So what what happened after the show? Did you ever talk to the girl? Have you talked to her since? After the show, we so there's five of us. So we all played blind date parties because we don't see the episode before you do. We see it the exact same time you do. So however they edit it, because they said, we can make you look like a villain or we can make you look like a good guy. It's really up to us. 
So you have yeah. no idea how they're going to edit the show. So all of us end up having blind date parties. We went to each other's houses to watch our episode. So you've ever seen it. So then we went and watched the episode. It was fun. It was cool. With um, the girl? You went with the girl to watch it? And yeah, with the girl. The- yeah, okay. yeah, and- with the girl. We went to different people's houses to watch the show, watch yeah. the episode. It was fun. It wasn't a match. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm looking for a little bit of a wild type of girl for what my lifestyle was. But yeah. super, super nice girl. But just... Um, for someone that wants someone that's more calm and relaxed and stuff like that, right? And still keep in touch with some of the other guys. Uh, I don't know if you talk Todd Shapiro, the uh, big uh, in the media here in Toronto. He's doing yeah. huge things. Like I still talk with him. So um, wait, he was on the show too as a yeah, he was on the show too. Oh yeah, wow, he too. yeah. Oh wow, that's that's actually funny. But we went on a big, huge, really big media blitz. We had to do breakfast television. We're on the cover of TV Guide. It's an American show, but because they came to Toronto, it was a big deal. This was in the newspaper. This is a uh, TV guy, Lisa and Carlos. Like my <laughs> mother actually saved this. <laughs> Your mother's so proud of you. Yeah, yeah. My mother, like, like, yeah, my mother, this is the whole article that we did. This is on uh, the TV Guide, Star Week, and there, there's Todd down there. So that's Todd Shapiro right there. Yeah, it's Todd right there. Yeah. <laughs> my old, my old youngie looks. Look at that romantic couple over there. You know, like little hearts. <laughs> like, Look at that, look at that. Look at right in each other's eyes, look at the gaze. <laughs> it was a great experience. And we all know how American television is, we got paid. If you don't mind me asking, what did you get paid? We got a check of $800 US in the mail. Oh, wow. First That's of all, I didn't cool. expect any money at all because I was on Matchmaker yeah. as well, the Canadian yeah. version. And we got nothing for that. What, what did you say on your thing? You said, Something like, um, I don't have one night stands because I please the girls so much that they come back for more. Well, I've never really had a one night stand because I usually please them so much that they usually want to come back for more. Is, is that still so, the case? <laughs> so, yes. So, I, I I like to talk a lot of trash, obviously, because that's why I win these awards. And uh, they're like, do you ever have one night stands? I'm like, well, no, because I usually please them so much that they usually come back. So, no, I've never had a one night stand. And of course, they found that kind of funny, and they put that in the clip and on television because, of course, that's what they do. And uh, yeah, those uh, <laughs> still stand to this day. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad you still stand by those words. Of course, you gotta you, you gotta stand what you believe in, right? I guess you never met the host, Roger Lodge. He was definitely not there, right? No, you don't. You don't ever see him at all. You just go on the dates, and then they edit stuff and post, and then they just air it, and they tell you, "Hey, your show's gonna be aired this week," and then. It was a whole Blind Date Toronto, uh, the whole media thing. It was, it was a pretty big deal at the time. Blind Date was a big deal. It's a real date that you go on. It's an actual legit date. You don't know the girl, you have a good time. You literally try to meet the girl. But because there's a lot of things that they're promoting, like the Air Canada Center and the CN Tower, we have to do a lot of takes. So they're like, hey, I've never seen the CN Tower before. Okay, do it again. Hey, I've never been to the CN Tower before. So there's a lot of repetitive stuff that you have to do to promote what you're doing. Because of course, a lot of these places are sponsored. So if we're going to like, um, I don't know, Club 44, and they're like, hey, have you been to Club 44 before? No, I heard it's amazing. Let's go. So you'd have to do that a couple times over again to make sure you're promoting whatever brand that you're doing. Because it's all television. At the end of the day, television is television, right? So there's a lot of um, other takes that we're doing. Um, a lot of downtime, just waiting as you're setting up stuff, getting a lot of uh, permits for the people to sign things. Um, but it is a real date that you, if you don't know the girl, but I can see if you don't like the girl, the date going very wrong because it's a long day. It's a long day. And if she doesn't like you or you don't like her, it's just a date probably from hell <laughs> to be honest with you. Cause if you don't like the girl, she doesn't like you. You're just going through the motions for like 12 hours. So you were okay. Your date was fun. You had a good time, even though it wasn't a match. You had fun. We had a great time. Like I mean, just going to the CN Tower, ACC, going to this place. So this experience, we had a, both had a great time, right? So you got, you got to eat some seafood, have some beer, you know. Oh, was choked and died. Yeah, it was, it was, good, times. <laughs> it was good times. I do whatever it takes. Bro, you did what you had to do. You stood out. You got on TV. You killed it. That's amazing, man. And thank you for coming on and telling me your story. Anytime, man. Anytime. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please fist pump that like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. Thank you.